What is going on everybody, Weedles from Needle here, and we are backing in with some more VGC 2018 battling content because VGC is fun! <laughs> now my team, it may look wow, like I'm packing so a trick room bored. team, but looks, looks can, can be, be deceiving. deceiving. I do have a different form of speed control that you have likely have never ever seen before. Now looking at my opponent's team, he's packing the very broken Como O with the Z-move that we all know and love. Thanks. Mega Gengar, Gastrodon, which is going to be kind of rough for my Clam Pearl, and Tapu Bulu, which kind of like demolishes my team. So um, this is going to be a pretty rough matchup for me because, you know, if you don't have double fairies against Como O, you automatically lose to it. So let's just hop right into the game. Alrighty, my first opponent, of course, is wearing the fuckboy Komo'o outfit, confirming that he is a fuckboy because not only is he using Komo'o, you know, the broken Pokemon itself, he's also using the freaking outfit of Komo'o. So his life literally is Komo'o with this guy, probably only uses Komo'o teams because that's just how he is. So we lead off with our Banat and Togetic to see he has Komodium Z and Gengar right with Frisk, which is really useless because we already know what items they're carrying. Gengar's gonna go for Parasong, Soundproof, you know, Komo'o is gonna go for the Z-move, where you're gonna automatically lose because VGC. Fine. So Mega Gengar's gonna Mega Evolve. I also decided to put the uh, black lines on this video because half the Pokemon in this video looked really bad without the black lines and glitchies. Like Mega Gengar's teeth looked really bad. So I enabled the black lines for this video. Also, I think switching in between the two you know, satisfy both sides because some people like the no lines and other people don't like the no lines. So I figured I'd mention that. So my opponent goes for protect, fearful of the Mega Bayonet's attack, which makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go for the follow me, expecting my opponent to want to go for Shadow Ball into Mega Bayonet. And I also want to redirect any damage being targeted at Banat. I'm going to go for the skill swap targeting Komo'o. Now there's a very good reasoning behind that because I'm going to be able to skill swap and take away a soundproof, which not only does it block Parish Song, so he's going to Parish Song himself. I also wanted to see if I, I can take away a soundproof and use it to block the Komo'o Z move. So my opponent's going to go for the Komo'o Z move. If this works, that means I don't have to cut out the Z move animation. If it doesn't, we got to block out the Z move. And as you can see, Soundproof makes us immune to the Z-move, and it doesn't affect Togetic, so get fuck Komo. Oh, I felt so good. I didn't even care if I lost this battle. Being able to cock block the Komo -Oh Z-move felt so good. But now my opponent's gonna go for Sludge Bomb targeting Togetic, and my opponent's gonna go for Flamethrower targeting Togetic as well. He probably predicted follow me there, which makes a lot of sense. I go for a Skill Swap targeting Komo -Oh again, just because I want my prankster back. Theoretically, I could have just switched out of my Mega Bayonet and brought in something else, but it's very important that I have prankster on Mega Bayonet because it's just like my previous VGC video where the strategy revolves around giving a Pokemon prankster. So I'm going to go for the skill swap targeting Togetic because I want to give Togetic prankster and give my Mega Bayonet hustle because that's what my Togetic ability is. The opponents going to go for Sludge Bomb are able to tank it reasonably well, surprisingly, despite the fact it's Mega Gengar. I'm assuming he's max HP. My opponent double targets my Togetic as we're able to stomach that. I'm going to be able to go for the Roost because I figure my opponent is going to try to target me at the very least. And if Mega Bayonet dies, it doesn't really matter all that much because my main priority is to give Togetic the Prankster ability so I can go for the Prankster after you. Now, Prankster after you surpasses every form of speed control. Tailwind, Outspat, Trick Room, Outspat, Rain, Outspat, Chlorophyll, Outspat, Sandwich, Outspat. Like, literally everything outspeeds it unless they have priority moves themselves or Fake Out. So that's the only way you can get past after you. I go for the after you plus knock off of Hustle, knock out the Gengar. Flamethrower is not going to be able to do any damage to my Togetic. My opponent did not see that coming, and nobody does because I don't think anyone even thinks about Prankster after you because it doesn't exist on any Pokemon at all. That's why you have to give a Pokemon that has after you Prankster with Mega Banette. So I'm going to go for the Roost here with my Togetic and protect my Banette from any harm this turn and any Skull Burns. Uh, I don't think these Pokemon on the field can really touch me. Komo'o without boost isn't really all that threatening on Gastron unless it carries Ice Beam can't really hurt my... Uh, Togetic, so he does double target into my Mega Bayna here. I guess he doesn't really that fearful with the Togetic. I go for the Follow Me here. I was debating if I should put Encore or Follow Me on this side. I did decide Follow Me because Follow Me is such a broken move and it can be so useful in dire situations like here. Follow Me it helps me out a lot because I don't even have to go for After You this turn. I can go from Phantom Force because um, Gastrodon is slower than my Mega Bayonet, so I have no reason to go for After You in that situation. Skull is not going to be doing any damage to me, and we don't even get burned by a Skull surprisingly, so that's pretty lucky. 
And now I go for Follow Me again. I wish that Togetai could learn Helping Hand because then I can go for the Helping Hand Phantom Force. And the reason why I have After You and Phantom Force is because if you After You, then go for Phantom Force and your opponent targets the uh, Banette. Um, you disappear, and then the next turn they're likely going to be faster than you because I'm running zero speed EVs, and so I'm able to hit them before they can, or after they try and hit me, so my Mega Banette doesn't take damage, and then Togetic's the only one they can aggro, and if they get hurt Togetic, it's just, it, it turns pretty good. So I go for Roost again with my Togetic because I gotta keep it healthy, otherwise, you know, the strategy kind of falls apart, unfortunately. As Mega Banette gonna go, oh, first, okay, my opponent outspeeds, he goes for Clang Skills, realizing I'm probably gonna go for Follow Me, so that does make sense. Clang Skills is gonna do a decent amount of damage to me, but because he's not boosted, he doesn't do all that much. We are packing max HP on this Mega Banette. Gonna go for the knockup, but because of Hustle, yeah. we do miss because Hustle makes all of your moves 80% accurate. Well, was that the guy's fist in the background there when the gas jump recovered? That looked really weird. Um, but yeah, the gas jump for recover. And now I'm gonna go for the after you because I don't want to have my Banette taking more damage from clanging skills. So I go for the after you, Phantom Force yet again, hoping that we don't miss this time around because that would be unfortunate if we had a miss and then he just has to recover and blah 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 blah. Um, you're going to dodge Flamethrower, my opponent's going to go for Skull, we're going to dodge that with After You, Phantom Force, and uh, Gastrodon can't hit me with the Skull because he does move after me, so this is like the only issue with After You. I could After You the, uh, the um, Gastrodon and make it Skull into nothing, that actually could have been a play there, I didn't even think about that, but Phantom Force actually going to knock out Komo O because of the defense drop from the Clanging Skills and the Hustle boost, so down goes Komo O, one shotting out Pokemon with that high base defense felt pretty damn good. And now my opponent's gonna bring in his last, which is the Tapu Bulu. And Tapu Bulu shouldn't be able to really hurt Togetek unless he's like banded one hammer. Because Togetek, or not Togetek, because Tapu Bulu's grass stabs hit extremely hard. I'm gonna go for the after you here. Unfortunately, we don't have Gunk Shot, but to be honest, if I had Gunk Shot with Hustle, there's no way in hell I'm hitting that attack. So go for after you, Phantom Force, to guard my up, and not from any attacks. My opponent goes for Rock Slide. I'm pretty sure that means he's Choice Scarf because most Scarf Bulus run Rock Slide, and Scarf Bulu is common on these kind of archetypes of teams with Komo O and Mega Gengar. My opponent's gonna go for Skull targeting Togetic this time around. But uh, it doesn't do that much damage, but he finally does get the burden on you, which is unfortunate. It lowers my Togetic's longevity, but we're still in the Phantom Force, which means the uh, which means the Tabu cannot hit me with any attacks. And I can just go for the Pranks to Roost here to remove my Flying Typing so the Rock Slide does neutral damage. And at this point, my opponent really can't touch the Togetic. His best bet was locking himself into a Grass type move and then hitting the Togetic with the Grass move as a Roost. That was what I was afraid of, but he has Rock Slide instead. Surprise. So Phantom Force. Nearly Oko Tapu Bulu with the Hustle Boost and Stab with Phantom Force. It's very powerful, and Phantom Force also goes through Protect, which is very handy to have in VGC since every single Pokemon and their mom has Protect in VGC because that's how you VGC. And half of the Pokemon on this team have Protect as well because I kind of need to have Protect. Um, Togetic does not have Protect though. It probably should. Actually, I think I gave it Protect. Yeah, I did give it Protect. Never mind. What am I talking about? I'm thinking about another Pokemon on my team. Sorry, my bad, my bad. So I'm gonna go for the After You here because I just want to outspeed a Tapu Bulu here. I'm praying that we don't miss the Nox. Off. Please hit! As thankfully we are able to connect. Using Hustle is one of the most anxious things ever because all of your moves are automatically 80% accurate, and that's just like playing with fire. And we're gonna knock off Sihia's Choice Scarf, so I did get that uh, guess correct. And Earth Power is not gonna be able to knock out my Mega Binet, which is unfortunate for my opponent. And now it is Mega Binet and Togetic versus the world. My opponent has not been able to knock out any of my Pokemon yet, so we're kind of dominating this game when I feel like we shouldn't have, but I felt like the skill swap against Koma O. Um, worked out very well for me, and my opponent didn't even try to go for Parish Song with Gengar, so um, that was kind of weird. I expected him to go for Parish Song turn 1 and go for the uh, Z move with the Komo, which is why I went for Skill Swap and felt very confident in that, but he only went for uh, Shadow Ball instead, so I mean, I was fine with that. Or Protect, rather. Sorry, I'm like, pfft, my mind's like uh, in a dumpster right now because it's 3 in the morning and I'm already mad at 3 in the morning. Not a good idea, but um, that's what I do, and this is the only time I have to narrate a battle, so yikes. Gonna bring Crabominable here my crab guy and here i'm gonna do a classic combo that many of you guys are probably familiar with go for the focus punch go for prankster after you so you get prankster focus punch pretty much and this does bypass like tapu lele's ability as you'll see later on in the video but focus punch I'm gonna knock out the gastron and we're able to defeat my opponent pretty comfortably with crabominable and prankster after you shenanigans wonderful, wonderful. Alrighty, my second opponent today actually has a pretty cool team. Since we both have the Ice Crabs, I was hoping that she brought her Ice Crab, and as you can see, she did. So I brought my Ice Crab to show her whose was truly better. She's also packing Lilligan and Torkoal and a Bruxish. Bruxish is commonly used with Anchor Point Pokemon with Frost Breath. I know your tactics. I used that shit like over a year ago, okay, honey? You can't surprise me with your memes. My memes 
are much greater than yours. So let's hop into this battle against this girl's name, who I can't pronounce. So I lead off with my Toxapex and my Banette because Toxapex walled out the majority of my opponent's team. My opponent is up with the Torkoal and the Lilligan, a pretty common combination back in VGC 2017. So we're going to Fresh and see his Grass CMZ in Charcoal, and he's going to activate the Drought. And now Lilligan has the Chlorophyll activated, so it pretty much outspeeds everything. So at this point, I felt pretty confident that Toxpex could live any barrage of attacks, including a double target from Lilligan and Torkoal, which I doubted was going to happen because, well, but that's a pretty big threat, right? So I might give off my Mega Banat, go for the Prankster skill swap because I want to make sure my Toxapex does get the Prankster ability just because Prankster Toxapex with Recover and Toxic and stuff is pretty aggravating to deal with, I would think. So my opponent immediately goes for the Grassy move trying to knock out something immediately, which definitely makes sense because my team is kind of like weak to Pokemon that just do a lot of burst damage like Lilligant and Torkoal for example. They just try and kill everything in front of them and pray that their like cheese can outdo their opponents like broken Pokemon. So my opponent goes for the Bloom Bloom here, targeting into Toxapex, and I am like Spadaf and Ebeed, so I should be able to live this pretty comfortably, but that does do so much damage. I'm assuming that Logan is modest nature just because of chlorophyll and stuff, so that is a pretty powerful attack. Thankfully, we outspeed the Torkoal and we're able to get our recover off as my opponent goes through the eruption here, which is going to do so much damage because I didn't even target the Torkoal this turn. Some of my opponent knew I wasn't going to target Torkoal. Down goes a Mega Banat, it's gonna get one shot. I skill swapped uh, Merciless onto Banat, so I was hoping I could use my Prankster Toxics plus, uh, you know, attacks from Banat and get some, like, you know, Merciless crits, but unfortunately, I didn't quite get that because I got instigated by Eruption. So now I bring up my Ice Grab here, go for the Protect, because I want to get some health back with my Toxapex. I figure my opponent's probably gonna double target into my Carbominable or go for, like, Solar Beam plus Eruption. So my opponent tries to go for After You and goes for the Eruption as uh, that would make it so he outspeeds everything because, you know, Chlorophyll makes Lilligan really, really fast and that after you makes it so, you know, Torkoal just gets Lilligan speed. However, my after you is greater than yours. So I go for Focus Punch here. I go for the after you and I'm like, all right, it all comes down to if Probominable can one-shot Torkoal with a freaking Life Orb, Iron Fist Boost, with Focus Punch. Can we knock this shit out? Are you kidding me? Torkoal lives. Which is really unfortunate, and then after you was going to fail because you know we already did our own after you, and but he goes for the eruption thankfully because he thought his after you would outpace mine. But no, honey, my memes are on another level. So <laughs> prankster after you greater than chlorophyll after you. I'm gonna go for protect yet again here just because I could go for the after you like ice hammer and knock him out, but instead I'm gonna go for the toxic just because I think he's gonna double target into Crabominable this turn, and I don't want to lose Crabominable this early on because he hasn't she hasn't bought up her own. Own ice crab and I want to show her ice crab that my ice crab is better so my opponent's are gonna, gonna try to go for the solar beam here targeting into Probominable. We're able to guard ourselves and then Heat Wave we're able to guard ourselves with the Protect because that's how we play VGC. You protect on everything but my Toxapex does not carry Protect. We're able to live at 69 HP, TP, XP, XP, and Toxic's gonna be able to knock out the Torkoal. So down goes Torkoal, don't have to worry about that thing spamming, you know, charcoal boosted, drought boosted, fire moves. And now my opponent's gonna bring in the Bruxish. Which is pretty threatening, actually. Bruxus can actually kill both my Pokemon, but I know that my opponent has Anger Point from Bobbinable because I've used that strategy before, and I'm like, this thing is not really an offensive threat because it probably has Frost Breath, so I just go for the After You Focus Punch, targeting into the Lilligant, and that's going to obliterate Lilligant. Good night, Lilligant. I could have went for Ice Hammer there, though Ice Hammer can miss, and I'm pretty sure After You plus, you know, you know, Iron Fist Focus Punch would seal the deal because that combo is so powerful, especially when you have Prankster. My opponent tries to go for a Trick Room here, but it doesn't matter what your speed control is. Even though he probably has Dazzling, it does not matter. After you, plus another Pokemon attacking bypasses that. I'm gonna go for Protect yet again just because I want to get some recoveries off. Makes sense, makes sense. I go for the Prankster Recover just because I don't want Cabominable like killing my Toxic with like Earthquake or some shit, so I just go for the Recovery here to play it safe. I already know my opponent's probably going to go for the Frost Breath, but I felt like I was safe enough in the situation to afford to go for Protect. So he's going to go for Rock Slide, does no damage because Trick Room is up, so he actually Frost Breaths after he attacks, which is unfortunate for my opponent. He's going to crit himself, activate his Anger Point, and uh, that's not nearly as satisfying as weakness policy. Going to go for the Focus Punch yet again, but my opponent one ups me, clicks his own win button, the gotcha, ally bitch. switch. So my opponent is very knowledgeable when it comes to the win button. I try to go for after you focus punch, my opponent was one step ahead of me there. And after you focus punch, 
into the Bruxish. If I was a guy at this game, I would have known he was going to ally switch and then target it into the Bruxish instead, but like, you know, you can't predict ally switch every time, okay? Literally like half the mods in the game are ally switch and it's such a broken move. It forces 50-50s and it's just really annoying to play against. So unfortunately, my ice crab loses to her ice crab, but the battle is not over. Just because the ice crab has won the fight does not mean it has won the war. So now I'm going to bring in a freaking clam pearl. Yes, honey, clam pearl. And clam pearl, I can just go for after you. My opponent can try to go for ally switch to uh, switch positions. Though actually, I don't go for after you this turn. That's right. I go for the haze because my top spec is prankster haze just for komoto team just for freaking cheese ship with like belly drum snorlax which is on every other team i can just go for muddy water and since the carbonables are neutral i should not get o-code by anyone attacking unless it's like close combat muddy water knocks out bruxish and does a lot of damage to the uh, carbonable as my opponent just thinks plus six rock side will seal the deal but unfortunately we have prankster haze as well because prankster haze is also very handy to have and now my opponent's last is Grabondable. He goes for the last ditch protect just to waste my time. Try and guarantee I get that 10 minute ad revenue. I can respect that. Unfortunately though, I think I've gotten past 10 minutes like three times in this video. Like three times 10 minutes because this battle's in, or this video is nearly 30 minutes long. But yeah, he's gonna protect himself. I try to go for after you plus ice beam, but he protects himself and not trick him off. So I should outspeed him or outslow him. But whatever the case, I just go for after you and I go for the Ice Beam. That should be able to knock out Crabominable because Clam Pearl is no slouch. Ice Beam is going to knock out Crabominable and we're able to defeat my opponent thanks to After You memes yet again. So this After You strategy is actually really fun to use. It's quite, it's kind of cheesy, but like that's literally my entire channel. So yeah. Already my third opponent today actually has a Tapu Lele. So pretty much Tapu Lele destroys every member on this team individually. And so this battle, I reveal my last member, which is Watchhog. Now, why do I have Watchhog on this team? because I like losing. So we have Watchhog in this game because I felt like this game was an auto loss anyway. I can't bring Toxapex. Togetek will just get overwhelmed. So I'm like, all right, Watchhog, it's your time to shine. And I felt bad because I haven't brought Watchhog at all. And I literally EV trained one just for this team. So I felt like I may as well use it. So I lead off with my Watchhog and my Binette. My opponent is off with the Zapdos and Tapu Lele trying to get off his speed control, which definitely makes sense. We're in a pretty beautiful beach area, but unfortunately the psychic terrain is going to make it look ugly and pink. So psychic terrain doesn't look Look bad i just feel like the beach looked better he's going to activate psychic seed and he's going to activate pressure as well and now the battle will begin so we're going to frisk and see he is life form on top of lele so that pretty much means everything on my team is going to get one shot though i already accepted that by facing a top of lele so we're going to mega you all immediately with mega banette because i want to get the skill swap off my uh watchhog has analytic which is really hard to get my hands on actually because Analytic Watchhog is one of the hardest hidden ability Pokemon to get in the game by far. So I go for the Prankster skill swap, giving it the Prankster and giving Mega Banette the uh, Analytic. And my idea was I can go for After You and then get the Slow After You um, or Slow Phantom Force with Analytic Boost. But unfortunately, we just get insta get by the Tapu Lele Balance Pokemon as my opponent goes for Tailwind and gets his speed control off. But at the very least, a Watchhog does not get targeted. We do miss the Hypnosis, but that's just going to happen because we're using Hypnosis. So now I'm going to bring Crabominable. I can't go for Prankster Hypnosis because of Psychic Terrain, so I just go for the Prankster After You here instead, revealing that it does work in Psychic Terrain, so I can go for the Prankster After You Ice Hammer into Top of Lele, hoping this is able to knock it out, as thankfully we're able to knock out Tapu Broken, the most broken Tapu in the game. I don't care what you guys say, Bulu and Coco are better. Tapu Lele gives me nightmares, okay? So I hate Tapu Lele the most out of the four, okay? Thunderbolt's not going to do anything because we are Spit Death Watchhog because I felt like Fizz Death Watchhog was useless because it's a normal type anyway. It's going to die to any fighting type attack. So I'm like, Spit Death instead. So we can live like one attack from strong special attackers. So now in comes the Tyranitar and Tyranitar can just rock slide my team to death. However, I felt like he was going to be pressured by the uh, Crabonable this turn. So my opponent's going to Mega Evolve with the Tyranitar and I could just go for the uh, after you focus punch targeting into Titar, but I felt like my opponent was going to try to bait out my uh, fighting type moving over protect with Titar. So I go for my own protect with Crabonable just trying to keep it safe, which definitely felt like it made the most sense in my head as my opponent doesn't even go for the protect. I just go for hypnosis targeting into Zapdos as we're actually able to connect a 60% accurate uh, hypnosis which is pretty lucky on my behalf my opponent does her dragon dance in the face of her crabominable so i'm like holy crap my opponent is a man yes but uh, unfortunately for him we put zapdos to sleep so now it's pretty much 2v1 zapdos is out of commission for a few turns 
And now I can just go for the after you focus punch again. And my opponent is going to be either forced to protect with T-Tar or switch out or just let it die. So that's unfortunate for my opponent. He's in a pretty rough position right now because Prankster after you bypasses Tailwind. And I, I just love this so much. So I go for the focus punch here. And my opponent actually goes for the Protect here, so it does make the read correctly, he goes for Protect. However, Zapdos is still snoozing the way, so unless it wakes up this turn, there's not much he can really do to take advantage of this prediction. So I go for the After You Focus Punch, as he does Protect himself. And if Zapdos wakes up, he gets some nice chip damage off. But Zapdos is still snoozing the way, because when you hit a Prankster Hypnosis from a Watchhog, you're going to make the opponent stay asleep. It's kind of like when I used Grass Whistle, and I think it was like a Grassy Terrain PU battle I had a few weeks ago. But uh, now, I'm going to get hit by Sandstorm, which is fine. As long as the teacher is unable to get an attack off, it should be in a good position. Tailwind's gonna peter out, which literally has no impact on the game because the pranks are after you. Gonna go for the after you focus punch yet again. My opponent doesn't even try to avoid it. Gonna go for the prankster after you. Target microbominable and the stab. Iron Fist boosted focus punch probably did like a thousand percent to this T-Tar and then like a damage calc. So down goes Mega Tyrant and Tar unfortunately doesn't get to do anything against me. And <laughs> the Zapdos is still snoozing away. So like I said, the Prankster Hypnosis definitely came clutch. I felt like it was going to be useless, but thankfully it came through. I also have Screech on this Watchhog, as you'll see, which helps me lower opponent's defenses if I have the option to, but usually I want to go for Prankster after you. So, so I think it trains going to Warehouse, so we're able to see the pretty beach again during a Sandstorm, and now my opponent's going to bring in the Snorlax here, and Snorlax doesn't really have that much offensive pressure either, so I can just go for Focus Punch against this thing. I'm going to go for after you, and instead of going for Focus Punch, I think I just go for Ice Hammer targeting Zapdos, knowing it's going to wake up this turn and it probably carries Heat Wave or Thunderbolt, which will definitely do damage, so I Icy Hammer, one-shot Zapdos, because that did not stand a chance of living. Probable hits so hard, and there's very few switches to it, but it's just super slow. And that's how Prankster After You helps it out a lot. My opponent goes for Facade, which doesn't knock me up because it's Facade and not Return. So thankfully, we're able to keep our Probable around. If he had Return, I think I had a chance to lose this battle, actually, because my last one is Clan Problem. We're facing a Snorlax, so I'd have to rely on, like, Hypnosis hitting and stuff, which would not have been fun. So, yeah, I'm gonna go for Protect here with my Probable here, just to be on the safe side, you know, and I go for the Screech just because I figured this is the only battle I'm using Watchhog in, so I may as well just reveal the Prankster Screech. So Screech going to lower the Snorlax's defense, and Facade we're going to guard ourselves with Protect. And from here, my opponent is just going to lose to Grabominable. So I'm going to get some more leftovers, which I probably should have given a Watchhog a Pinch Berry as well, but I kind of just like threw a random item on it because I didn't think I was going to use it at all. I go for the Focus Punch, and I go for the After You, and After You is going to allow me to obliterate this poor, I almost said Slowbro, Snorlax, goodbye Slowbro, or Snorlax, they're pretty much the same mons, but yeah, down goes Snorlax to Focus Punch, and we're able to defeat my opponent with freaking Crabominable destroying him, GG dude. Alrighty, my fourth opponent today, Power of the Sun, is packing a chair room. So you already know we're going to be in for a tree. I have no idea what the chair wants to go for. I do see nine tails, and I know about Flower Deck because I've used it before. It gives you plus one attack and plus one special defense to you and your ally. So I'm curious to see how my opponent's going to take advantage of that. I mean, she's also packing pretty broken Pokemon and Metagross and Landry is thick, which actually took four battles to appear in this video. Have you guys noticed the lack of furry wrestlers as well? Is this really VGC? See? Huh? So Power of the Sun leads off with the Ninetales and the Cherim job as I decide to lead off with my Mega Bayonet and my Toxapex. Though bringing Toxapex in this game may have been a bad idea just because my opponent had a Metagross and a Landorus Teeth. I felt like it was whatever because I'm pretty sure Togetic would die to it too. And then Watchhog's just going to die. So we first can see his Fiery MZ and a Guap Berry. Flower Gift's going to transform Cherub into the very beautiful dancing happy form. I'm going to Mega Evolve immediately with Mega Bayonet because I didn't really feel like I needed Mega Bayonet in this game. I just wanted to get the the pranks are off and toxic effects for obvious reasons. This team is very one dimensional, which is why it's like good and best of one. So, my opponent's gonna go for the helping hand. I'm like, do you really need a helping hand to knock out Mega Bayonet in the sun? So, my opponent goes for helping hand. I go for the skill swap, targeting into toxic effects which is going to allow me to get my Merciless ability on Mega Banette and Prankster on Pex. My opponent goes with the Fire Z move and I'm like, you really do not need to go for Helping Hand Fire Z move to knock out my Mega Banette, dude. Like, this is just overkill. So my opponent's going to go for the Inferno Overdrive with his Ninetales and I'm like, all right, well, this is going to obliterate my poor Mega Banette. Good night, world. So Inferno Overdrive is going to cook my Mega Banette alive. But he targets Toxifex instead, so I'm like, psh, Toxifex will eat this up. Damn! 
and then it just dies and then it just dies it got one shot by a fire z move <laughs> Oh my gosh, so I didn't think the Nine Tails had that much raw power, but you know, with Flower Gift, Flare Blitz, Helping Hand, I guess it has that much damage potential. Hell, I want to use this team now. I want to use this strategy now. So if you guys would like to see me use a Cherim team in the future, let me know. I didn't know it had this much potential and that much power to one shot a freaking Toxapex with the resisted attack. Energy Ball is going to knock out my Clamperpool. I get obliterated by this guy. Like, I literally get my cheeks. I got clapped so hard, but I don't know what. I wasn't even mad. When he one shot my Toxapex with that Z move, you can't even get mad at that. I go for the focus punch just to show him what it's really about. My opponent goes for the helping hand. <laughs> this game is absolutely ogre. All he needed was to chair my Ninetales combo to beat me, and Flare Blitz is going to obliterate me. So I was not ready for that, though. I'm pretty sure I would have lost to this regardless of what I did because the freaking Fire Zima would have one shot any sort of after user I had in this team. So it very well played to my opponent. I mean, he didn't really play well, he just kind of clicked buttons, but that was still a really cool strat to see. And we get melted alive by Power of the Sun. Very fitting name there for my opponent's team. My fifth and final opponent today, Genji, has an e extreme Evo boost team. Now, I feel really bad for my opponent, like really, really bad, because normally these teams are pretty annoying to deal with unless you have specific counters to them, like Roar or Whirlwind or Haze, which my Toxapex does unfortunately have, so my opponent's like, Psh, I'm about to cheese this guy who thinks he can use Mega Banat in my face. Not on, girl. That's not how it's going to work for you, so my opponent is off with the Eevee and the Clefairy, as I decide to lead off of my Bonetti and my Toxapex. So we're going to Frisk Seas, EVMZ, and Eviolite, though we already knew that pretty much. And I'm pretty sure I can't one-shot Eevee just because of the uh, front guard, so I don't even try to. I Mega Evolve with my Mega Bonetti, Mega Bonetti. I like some Bonetti a little bit more now, so we're going to Mega Evolve with Mega Bonetti, and I can just go through Prankster Skill Swap into Pax. My opponent goes for Protect with Clefairy. You could have went for Follow Me there and actually made it so I Skill Swap into Clefairy as opposed to Skill Swapping into Toxapex. But I would have gotten Friend Guard as opposed to uh, Prankster on the Pax or Merciless, which wouldn't have been that bad actually. I would just have to Skill Swap Clefairy again and get it back, and then it would have been annoying. My opponent goes for the EVZ move, and I have to cut this out unfortunately because Game Freak will smite my video otherwise, so rip. Black, 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 black. Alrighty, so the Eevee gets plus two attack, plus two defense, plus two special attack, plus two special defense, and plus two speed. A pretty balanced e Z move, if I do say so myself. Like, this Z move is actually really, really balanced. Unlike Komoos, where you just get an ancient power boost for free while doing, you know, 185 base power damage to both targets. That's just a little broken. My opponent goes for follow me here just to redirect any damage I target at the Eevee. I go for Toxic, just trying to target down. Uh, the Clefairy with the Toxic just because I don't really have a good way to really kill it unfortunately so toxic, it's toxic ing it is my best call and I can also go for Merciless Crits against it. My opponent goes for Baton Pass here with the Eevee and he's gonna Baton Pass all those boosts out and bring in his Crocodile which probably has Power Trip because he Baton Passed into it. I go for the Phantom Force here targeting into the Clefairy because I want to get that nice Merciless Crit because I haven't gotten it off in any of these battles yet so that's all I wanted to do was just get the Merciless Crit off with uh, Phantom Force. But here, my opponent goes for Follow Me. He's like, all right, it's time to win the game here with my Crocodile. And then I'm like, bitch, where? Prankster Haze and get those boosts out of here. So I haze away all of those stat boosts from Crocodile. And that's my opponent knew he fucked up. Power Trip ain't gonna do shit to Toxapex. Toxapex is one of the biggest cock block Pokemon ever and you know it definitely improves itself in this battle for sure. Phantom Force nearly one shots Clefairy thanks to the crit but the poison damage will be able to seal the deal and down goes Clefairy because we do get the guaranteed crit thanks to the merciless we skill swapped onto my Mega Banette because I didn't want to give my uh, Toxapex Regenerator. I felt like giving it Merciless would actually benefit Bennett slightly. And I wanted to make a small combo with, you know, Merciless because Merciless can't really be used efficiently on Toxapex because his offensive stats are zero. So now I'm going to bring in Clan Pearl here because I didn't want to take an attack from, uh, from Crocodile potentially or Espeon. So he's going to go for the, the Protect here with his uh, Espeon. I go for Toxic, trying to hit the uh, Crocodile, but I forgot about Prankster not working on Dark types. So I kind of made it, had a brain fart there. I keep doing that. Like, I know that, that that's how it works, but I just keep forgetting about it every single time for some reason. So he's going to go for Earthquake, do a shit ton of damage to me. And I'm like, oh crap, I could still lose this game if I'm not careful. So my opponent's going to go for the Protect here with his Crocodile. But I don't know how he knew, but he knew I had the Prankster after you. So I go for after you here. 
and I'm gonna go for the after you plus muddy water combo and that would have definitely knocked out Crocodile and we're gonna be able to get some nice chip damage off on the Espeon. Unfortunately Espeon doesn't get to go for the Psych Up against Crocodile and Crocodile can't destroy my team with Power Chip because, you know, just Haze is too good. My Pogo goes for Star <laughs> Power here. He actually misses it because we got a special or a accuracy drop with Muddy Water, which is unfortunate. I go for the after you yet again. No reason not to at this point. And I could just go for the Ice Beam this time around. Not trying to risk missing the uh, Muddy Water here. As Ice Beam will be able to knock out Crocodile as well. Down goes Crocodile to the Ice Beam. My opponent just cannot do anything. I probably shouldn't have posted this battle. It was a little bit one-sided though. I felt like if I was going to post that battle where I got obliterated by the Sun team, I should post this battle where I obliterate the EV team as well just because I felt like it's even, right? Like if I get destroyed, I should, I should be able to post a battle where I destroy somebody else in a very satisfying way. So we get our Pop Berry as well, which is enough to demoralize my opponent to just forfeit the battle because at this point, there's no way he can win, and we're able to defeat my opponent because of freaking Toxifex's Haze pretty much single-handedly. So that was a pretty uh, one-sided match against Genji, but I felt like I should post it anyway just to show you guys how good Haze can actually be in VGC because a lot of people try to do their cheese stuff, but Haze is just like, goodbye, Bye. and then they're like, oh, oh shit, <laughs> I guess I can't cheese. But yeah, that's going to be the video today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this VGC content. If you guys enjoyed this VGC content and really want to support my channel, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button as it really helps on my youtube channel a lot more than you realize youtube is in a really bad spot right now and if you want to help out my channel a lot besides disabling ad block because i know it's really difficult for a lot of people leaving a like on the video and leaving a comment is the greatest way to support my channel besides disabling ad block and i really do appreciate every single one of you guys who watch and support my content i know i've been um providing a lot more vgc content lately as opposed to smoke on content and i appreciate you guys who are supporting my recent change into playing more vgc and less smoke on i'm still playing them both like somewhat evenly and I'm, i don't plan on like completely dropping smoke on content but overall i just feel, i have a lot more fun playing vgc than i do smoke on and i don't feel like i'm pressured into only playing smoke on because you guys have just been so supportive and welcoming of the vgc content and i appreciate that because it means you guys are a lot more loyal than i realized and that's a really important thing for being a content creator so i appreciate you guys who watch my content regardless of how cancerous and what format it is because it just means you love me and i love you too cringe Anyways, the question of the day is going to be which Pokemon would you guys like to see me use in a future Wi-Fi battle? Let me know in the comments down below if there's a specific Pokemon or group of Pokemon you guys would like to see me utilize in a future Wi-Fi battle. You can also include a moveset that I may or may not use the moveset depending on how autistic it is. If you guys see a comment with a certain Pokemon or certain moveset you'd also like to see me use, leaving an upvote on that comment or reply to the comment saying, we don't use this shit right now, will make me more inclined to use that set because seeing a lot of people supporting one specific set will make it more inclined to use it obviously because that means more people want to see it and that just makes sense right so that's going to be the question of the day thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video it is now four in the morning i've been narrating for like over an hour because i have some filled tons and i do appreciate all of you guys who watched till the end of the video if you watched till the end of the video be sure to leave a comment saying that weedle to needles content is awful and i really hope she deletes her youtube channel but thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. I'll check you guys next time for battle number 100.